Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in, and if you guys remember me saying at the end of February, at the end of February, we're finally gonna see year over year price decline, and all of those people that are cheerleading that it's still time to buy, their narrative was gonna be blown out of the water. You guys, that day is finally here, The almost the exact day when I said it was gonna happen. So again, I didn't do that based on crystal balls, right? Oh, crystal balls. I did it based on logic, experience, and following the data. And that is why it is so important that if you guys listen to people, especially about real estate, at the very least, they have to be up to date on the data, formulate their opinion, that's fine, but acknowledge the data. So today what we're gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna show you the price decline that we have right now, which by the way, you guys, it's historical. We have historical equity decline right now, okay? But I'm gonna show you the charts from Redfin that finally show we have year over year price decline on a national average and almost 50%, <laughs> sorry, almost 50% of the biggest metro areas are on the year over year price decline list. So really, really exciting, you guys. We'll look at inventory, we'll look at all of that stuff, we'll look at their charts, we'll do all of that. But remember you guys, I'm not a financial advisor, even though my bio is as someone that is super happy that what I'm feeling is gonna happen is happening because that means that we're not waiting in vain. That means that as we wait, we will, as long as we can wait, as long as we can hold on, we will find the deal of our dreams. And that's why real estate mindset exists. I have live videos on how to purchase real estate. I'm taking you through my own purchasing journey. But right now, what we need to do is stop and understand what's going on in our market, right? Now, other than that, again, you guys like the video, subscribe. I, can't, I don't know if I remember to say that, but again, you guys, please. I'm just excited right now because it went down how we thought it would, right? So much hate right? So many people picking on me saying I'm just lying, blah, blah, just for views. We hit year over year price decline on a national average. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, right? Isn't that amazing? But anyways, guys, please just like the video, subscribe if you haven't, shoot me a comment below. I read all of y'all's comments. I don't always respond because I'm overwhelmed. Again, a couple days ago was my one year anniversary. So one year anniversary, boom, national price decline, right? Year over year price decline, super excited. But either way, you guys, the name of the Redfin article that we're gonna go over today is titled Housing Market Update, Home Prices Fall Annually for First Time in a Decade as Mortgage Rates Pass 7%. And that's why we're four percenters. Remember, you guys were watching the 10 year treasury. I said 4%. We want 4%. 4% gives us 7% interest rates. And here comes the pain. Guess what? We're in the 4% right now. Again, happy anniversary, real estate mindset. <laughs> right? You guys look at all the stuff that happened on the one year anniversary of real estate mindset. I mean, it's just all coming together, right? As long as you guys are waiting with me, right? As, as long as you know, we're taking people to success together, right? But let's read some of this stuff. Super exciting to go over this with you guys. You have no idea how excited I am right now. Or maybe you do have an idea. All right, but here's what here's how this reads. The median US home price declined 0.6% year over year in February, making the first annual drop since 2012. But high rates mean homes aren't more affordable. The milestone, again, this is a milestone. This is huge. This is why I'm so excited. This is huge. Not everyone's going to understand what I'm saying, but this is huge, you guys. Now, the milestone comes as daily average mortgage rates hit 7.1%. Jeez. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, there's a lot of buyers that have never seen 7% in their entire life. Their adult life, right? Their adult life. There are so many people right now in their adult life that have never seen this before. Isn't that wild, y'all? I've seen seven and eight percent when I first started in 2002. Anyways, U.S. home prices, U.S. home sale prices have fallen from a year earlier for the first time in more than a decade. Here, prices falling from a year ago is a milestone because it hasn't happened since the housing market was recovering from 2008. OK, so I just want to point out, y'all, we have this happening right now without skyrocketing unemployment, skyrocketing foreclosure and hyper supply. OK, so, yes, this market is different than 2008. It's possibly worse. It depends on the Federal Reserve and people spending, but it's worse right now. Why is it worse right now? Because the bubble was nothing fundamental. It was printed. We printed 
the equity. We printed the bubble. Therefore, it was never real to begin with. At least in 02 to 08, at least it was kind of real, although it also wasn't real because of the stated income and subprime collapse. But anyways, you guys, my point is, is it ain't real right now. And it went up a lot faster than it did in 02 to 08. Home prices skyrocketed so much over the last few years that they were likely to come down once rates rose from historic lows. Mortgage rates rising to the 7% range was the straw that broke the camel's back. And that's why I'm telling you guys, that's why I was always like, we need 4%. We need to break the camel's back, right? We need that 4% treasury. We need rates in the 7% because what I learned with the second round of inflation is, is there is a lot of buying demand, right? Um, on the sidelines in the sense that people still have COVID money. Now they're down roughly 40% from what they had, but people still got COVID money and they're salivating, even though they know prices are ridiculous. Let's read this last part and then we'll go over some leading indicators. Prices will probably decline a bit more in the coming months, but first time buyers hoping to score a major deal this year are likely out of luck. Okay. So score a deal, a major deal this year are likely out of luck. So this is acknowledging that more than likely, if you're a first time home buyer, you're probably going to want to wait to 2024. Okay. Now, if you're more experienced, even if you're a first time home buyer, but if you're a more experienced buyer and you know how to hunt, and find a great deal. And if you understand what is a great deal, what is it? Is it a home that's just price cut? No, a great deal. You got to base on multiple years of what happened in that local housing market. You need to purchase with a wedge, with equity in the house. You need to purchase, you know, with the ability to cash flow if you ever have to sell. So, you know, if you're a hunter, I would say you're definitely going to be able to find some deals in 2023. I'm looking myself, I put an offer in and got rejected, but it is what it is. That's because so few homeowners are listing their homes for sale. And that's okay, you guys, because remember, people that sell, 75% of them buy. So it's okay, but the reality of that statement is, is we do need more inventory. We, we absolutely need more inventory. That, I think, is undisputable. Limited inventory and continued interest rates is turnkey in turnkey homes in desirable neighborhoods will keep prices somewhat priped up and high rates will continue to be a hit on affordability. All right. So very interesting. Let's look at some leading indicators here, you guys. So leading indicators. Now we're going over leading indicators week over week. I love the leading indicators, y'all. Uh, that's why I use Redfin and I use multiple, multiple data providers, not just Redfin. We use Fred. We use Black now. We use CoreLogic, Zillow, Realtor.com, Narhar. We use a bunch of different places. But for the week ending March 2nd, okay, Interest rates rose 6.615, but that's according to Fred. I want to point out that right now we're at 7.1. And that's for people with great credit. More than likely your rate is, like I said, you guys, especially with the upward trends, is probably going to be 50 to 75 basis points higher. So in other words, some, pe some people, not all, some people are knocking on the door of 8%. Think about it. What if rates go to 8% during the busy season this year? I think that's what needs to happen. Let me know if you agree. Do we need 8% rates this summer? Now, mortgage purchase applications during the week ending 24th, February 24th declined 6%. Here's the thing, you guys. This is the lowest level, okay, since the 1990s. Okay, purchase applications were down 44% from a year earlier. So in other words, you guys, I'm worried about my own job. You guys know that I've got out of sales and I have a W-2 job at AMCAP Home Loans. It's, you know, I just, I love them so much, you guys, that they have such a skilled group of people. Um, but because I'm not in sales, I'm worried I'm going to get laid off. I, I don't know how they, you know, how much longer they can afford to keep me. If they, you know, mortgage companies have a tremendous amount of expenses. So if their loan offices aren't closing, you know, the ship sinks quickly, right? So hopefully I won't be laid off. <laughs> Luckily, I have multiple sources of income. But if I, you know, if I am... You know, it is what it is. At least I saw it coming and did something about it. Now, demand, you guys, home buying demand, all right? Home buying demand was down 24% from a year earlier, okay? So home buying demand is down 24%. But as these reports come out, you know, next week and the week after that, we're going to start seeing those interest rates, as long as they stay this high, really eat into these trends. Now, Google searches were down 18% from a year ago. So this is, you know, people want to buy. That's what it's showing. People want to buy. They just can't afford it. They're priced out. They're on time out. Good thing they are because they would have kept buying. I'm telling you guys, people have always wanted to buy. Uh, even a bad deal. People even want bad deals. And we saw that. Touring activity has been up as well. 
which is interesting. Now let's look at some other stuff here. Now here's a beautiful, beautiful thing, you guys. I really love this. You guys know I've been following this. Now the median sales price actually did go up week over week. Um, it's now at 352.46. But the thing is, the the really huge milestone here is it's down 0.6% from a year earlier. That means on average, anyone that purchased in the last year is down 8.6%. Not 0.6. They're down 8.6%. Because remember, it generally, just generally, cost 8% to sell. Again, it cost 8% to sell. So they're down. If you bought within, as long as you didn't buy at the peak, as long as you only bought in February, <laughs> you see my point? If you bought at peak, you're done. If you guys bought at peak, if anyone bought in June, July, May, June, July, you guys, I'm sorry, you're bag holders. You're going to have to get through probably 10 years of being stuck in the house. And that's the reality of this situation. That's why we can't just rush the home buying purchasing, right? It's a really bad idea. Now look at this. Median sales price fell in roughly 24. Look at that. 24, almost 54 was at 48%. Look at this, 48%. So again, how, how is the market not crashing? Can, can someone comment below if you're a realtor and you know you, you, you comment below, tell me how is the housing market not crashing? We have 48%, 48% of the top US metro areas on year over year price decline. So if any of those realtors in these metro areas, look at these metro areas, you guys. Okay, look at these metro areas. We'll read this in a minute. But if any of the realtors in these metro areas kept telling people to buy from June to the end of the year and even into this year, you know, give yourself a round of applause. You just led people into a horrible financial investment. And they probably had to go fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 over appraisal value just to get the deal. So anyways, you guys, and I know buyers make their own decisions, but you know what? I I've been doing this too long to not acknowledge that realtors do have a sway on the reckless emotions of some buyers. And that is a fact, but let's look at some of the decline. So home buying hotspots and Northern California. So Northern California is taking a beating you guys, but look at Austin. Austin is down big time because remember they lost the peak. So Austin's down 11% year over year. You guys, uh, hello? is anyone seeing this? Austin's down 11% year over year. That's not from peak. That's just year over year. Unbelievable. So again, I asked the realtors in Austin, how is Austin not crashing? How is it not crashing? Oh, because it's not your money. That's right. That's right. It's not your money, realtors. It's other people's money. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just really frustrated with the cheerleading in a lot of these metro areas. And now Austin's the biggest, you guys. Austin's the biggest crash city, followed by San Jose, Oakland, Sac Town as well, all California, and Phoenix. I've been to Phoenix. Unbelievable. I think Phoenix it's quite possibly going to take the first place over Austin. I don't know, but Phoenix is in, is just in such bad shape. You guys, now that's the biggest sales price on record of each of these metros, except San Jose. So let's just, let's just uh, highlight this real quick. Okay. Because a lot of people, not a lot of people, but a handful of people um, say that I'm only sensationalizing, but we hit a record. You guys, we, here's the thing. Okay. There's no guessing. We hit records. We have record price crashing right now. It's unevenly dispersed, okay? It is unevenly dispersed. We know that it's always unevenly dispersed. Real estate's about hyper-local markets, but on a national average and in many metro areas, it's historical price crashing. So if you guys think about that and you compare what happened last time, understand it does take time, right? Even though we have historical decline, there's still a lot more room to go because remember all of the overbidding, right? There's so much overbidding. There's a lot of fat that needs to be trimmed off before we really go into the bones of it, right? And again, the real people that are going to be paying for this are the recent owners. The recent owners are going to be paying the bill. Uh, and I'm not a recent owner, right? And if I am become a recent owner, I can guarantee you this. I'm not just going to go out and buy a house. I'm going to hunt. I'm going to make sure my numbers line up. I'm going to make sure there's wedge. I'm going to make sure I cash flow. I'm going to make sure it's a great deal. I'm going to make sure I love it or I'm not going to buy because I don't buy real estate that I don't love that's overpriced. I'm just saying, you guys, it's very dangerous to do that. Let's jump back into the article. All right. So let's go into visualizing some of this data here real quick. We'll talk about inventory, but look at you guys. Do you remember last week uh, when I did the video and I zoomed in and I was like, it's so close. Look at, we just went under. Look at. <laughs> We just went under. You see this? We're under. This is why we have year over year price decline, you guys. And I'm not knocking new owners. You know, we were warning you guys the whole time. And some people buy for different reasons, and that's fine. And some people will be perfectly okay. 
that's fine, right? But I'm talking to y'all, right? I'm not talking to them. And if they're okay, I'm I'm happy. I don't want people to get hurt. But look at here's where we're at. Now, here's the trajectory that I believe. Let me change colors real quick. I'm going to change to green, okay? So we're now under. Now, here's what I believe is going to happen, you guys, again, as a result of the unaffordability and the skyrocketing interest rates. Now, if the fear of missing out was evident in the seller's market, I would do a lot sharper decline. But here's what I think is going to happen. I think it's going to still go up a little bit and then the inventory is going to hit. A lot of deals are going to be taking place. And when we're supposed to be at our peak, we're actually going to start declining like this. Now, I don't know how slow it's going to be. That depends on how bad things get. But I'm hoping by the year end, obviously, we're under this line here. Because if we're under this line here, that means we're under 2021 values. All right. I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but I certainly hope it's going to happen this year. But this is what I suspect. Probably some moderate increases upward right here. And then as we continue to get inventory and more inventory, I think we're just going to go, you know, you know, kind of have a, a curve downward. Now, I don't know the trajectory. It could be steep. It could be not steep. It's really going to depend on a lot of factors, but that's what I believe is going to happen. And you guys, we are over, we are on the year over year price decline list. Now here's what's super refreshing. And, and then, you know, and that curve may be sharper because look at median sales price. Median sales price is already not keeping the trajectory of this red line. Okay. So probably what's going to happen is, is now that interest rates are higher, we're going to start seeing the asking prices go down like this in order for people to sell. And depending how desperate people get and how many people get desperate, maybe we'll be closer and closer and closer to 2021. But I want to see this year, I want to see things start going under 2021. I think we all want to see that. Would you guys agree? Let's keep going. Okay. And here is the systematic failure. And again, this systematic failure of unaffordability is not from the high rates. The high rates are, are here to fix the problem. The reason we have unaffordability is the low rates. We had low rates for too long and it shot up prices, actual hard, sticky prices. It's not the high rates that's doing this. It's the low rates. You guys, you guys know that, right? But look at how unaffordable average payment 25, 20, that's up almost 30%. Look at here is 2020. Here's 2021. So, you know, in my opinion, we should probably be as far as fundamentals, we should probably be about $1,800 a month. So in my opinion, the mortgage payment averages should be around $1,800 a month to line back up with fundamentals. We are way, way off of that, you guys. So huge systematic problems, you know, with unaffordability, really, really shocking. Let me show you guys some other stuff here that's pretty cool. Let me scroll down to the months of supply right here. Now, remember the months of supply take into account buying demand. I think this gauge is a lot more important than actually looking at active units. But if you want to look at active units, go to Fred Economic Data. There's active unit counts there. That's fine. But I'm using months of supply because it takes into account what's actually going on. Now, week over week, we're down. So we went, we're at 3.5. All right. So we're at 3.5 months. What do we need? We need six. Okay. Here's the magic number. I want this this year. So I want prices under 2021 averages and I want six plus. Let me put a plus there. We want six plus months this year. That is a an official buyer's market. All right. So six months plus this year. I'm hoping it happens. Not a good start so far because inventory went down. Do y'all, uh, anyone want to guess why that went down? Do y'all think it was because rates went under 6%? I think it's because rates went under 6%. But now that rates are over 7%, <laughs> probably what's going to happen, you guys, is this is going to go up sharply. I think that's going to go up sharply the rest of the year. I really do, because that's what needs to happen. I think that's going to go up sharp. And I really do feel like we're going to get six months of inventory this year. Sorry for my horrible notes, but I think that happens this year. Comment below. Let me know what y'all think. You guys are brilliant. Some of the comments I get. You have no idea how I try to learn from everyone, and I appreciate that. But look at this, guys. Also, uh, this balanced back out. It was going down because of the rates. This balanced back out. This is, you know, listings that had price cuts. This is affecting, obviously, uh, the asking prices and the final sales prices. But now that interest rates are super high again, this is going to go up. This is going to go straight up. Okay? That's what I think. I think that's going to go straight up, probably something like this. Right? Right? 
I don't know if that's going to happen, you guys, but that is my, you know, that's what I think is going to happen as far as the trajectory of listings that happen. All right, guys, and here is the home buying demand. As you can see here, we're still under, as you can see, the orange line. We're still well under the blue line and the red line, which is 2022 and 2021, but we're over 2020, which is the gray line. So demand is quite frankly, is being crippled, you know, and it's being crippled really, really rapidly. We're still over 2020 though, which is, you know, kind of disappointing um, because it means that people are still purchasing overpriced houses instead of protecting themselves. Now you guys, overall, my conclusion is this is such reassuring news. You guys, this is so good for us on the sidelines. I want to thank each and every one of you that has watched me for the last year that has, you know, taken my advice, at least listen, even if you did buy, cause I have had some core subscribers and I love them that did purchase. So they did purchase off peak. They said, you know, it was extremely helpful. They saved anywhere from 60, 100, $160,000. So I'm happy for that. But if you're still on the sideline like me, this is so reassuring you guys. This is absolutely what we want to see. The question is, is how long is it going to take? When will we'll be, you know, when will we be able to find a great deal? And those are things that you guys have to figure out by understanding your local housing market, reaching out to realtors to have them do market analysis and obviously increasing credit income and assets, but also really, really important, your mindset. Make sure to keep your mindset light, balanced, loving, right? Don't stay too stuck in the data. That happened to me middle of December, I got like bad burnout. You guys, I was like too much in the data. I had to take a step back. Uh, and, and, and by taking a step back, I was really able to rearrange my channel, work on different types of content. So I guess what I'm trying to say is thank you for following along with me on this journey. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.